Good morning, greetings America, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or formulations or ingredients or skin health questions, if you have comment or question about the our truth skin health products, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, we want to hear from you. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible at 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470 or head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order products off the website as well, of course. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can make some money selling longevity products and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you would like to check out some high-end premium connoisseur skin health products, check out truthtreatments.com, especially, especially our retinol 5% gel, also our truth serum, omega-6 healing cream, and a truth balm. If you're dealing with accelerated aging or aging skin, or you want to prevent aging of your skin, or if you have acne, especially, uh, particularly back acne, our retinol 5% gel, really effective on back acne. Uh, or if you just uh, you just want a high-end skin health product, if you're tired of paying for water and wax and filler and preservatives and fragrances and stuff your skin doesn't need or doesn't want, you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And finally, if you uh, want to check out some good health information, my friend Melissa Galladay is doing a weekly call on various health subjects, including longevity products. She's titling it Longer Life with Longevity. And you can learn from a pharmacist like myself. I've known Melissa for almost 20 years. And she go, uh, she calls herself the nutritional pharmacist. Hmm. Uh, nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay is going to be talking longevity. She does it every Tuesday via Zoom, an app called Zoom or software called Zoom, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Tuesday. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesdays. The number is 646-558-8656. That's 646-558-8656. And then you have to punch in a meeting code, which is 579-044-9276. All right. Thanks for joining us once again on The Bright Side. I want to finish up talking about cancer, the emperor of all maladies, as it has been called, cancer um, kills nearly 600,000 people a year in this country alone, millions around the world. Can you imagine this? 600,000 people die and die miserable deaths. I've watched people die of cancer, as many of you have. It is miserable beyond words, and the chemotherapy and the radiation and the medical protocols that they use to deal with cancer are not much better, although, as I said yesterday, sometimes they're necessary. Cancer is not an organ issue or a tissue issue, and this is where the problem comes from. The medical model addresses cancer as if it were an organ, can an organ disease. 
liver cancer, lung cancer, bone cancer, brain cancer, skin cancer. But really, cancer is not an organ disease or a tissue disease at its most fundamental level. It is a cell disease. Surprise, surprise. All disease is cell disease, and that includes cancer. Cancer is not, we don't have lung cancer, we've got lung cell cancer. We've got liver cell cancer, bone cell cancer. And this is an important distinction to make because you see, the medical model can't do squat at the level of the cell. The medical model cannot do nothing at the level of a cell. It is an impotent failure at the level of a cell. That's why they have to take organs out and tissues out and radiate. Now, interestingly, Super, super duper high tech medicine or pharmacological medicine, pharmacology, if you will, is really very proud of itself because now it's figured out how to work at the molecular level. See, there's three different levels where disease shows up or there's three different, different levels where health shows up. There's three different levels of biology. You've got the big level, the macro level. That's the tissue or the organ. That's the lung or the bone. And then you got the teeny, 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 infinitesimally, microscopically, submicroscopically small level. That's the molecule level. And then you got the in between level. In between the tissue and the organ and the molecule, you got the cell. And the cell is where the action is. And the cell is what they never talk about because they can't do nothing at the level of a cell. So you got the old style of medicine, which is still present with us. It's still old style medicine is still with us. And you got the old style medicine way of treating cancer, and that's to work at the tissue and the organ level. Then you got the newfangled way, which pharmacologists, pharmacologists and drug companies are really proud of themselves about in a newfangled way, and that's the molecule. They deal with trying to change the genetics or change the molecule inside a cell. But what they don't tell you is, because they can't do anything about it, is the disease doesn't show up at the teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny levels fundamentally, and it doesn't show up at the organ level fundamentally, it shows up at the cell level. Cancer is not a molecule disease first and foremost, and it's not a tissue disease first and foremost, it's a cell disease, as all diseases are. And we got power over the cell. That's the dirty little secret of medicine. The medicine doesn't have power over the cell, we do. There's only three things that make a cell sick. There's only three things that make a cell go cancerous. There's only one thing, really, and that's a burden, and there's only three things that cause that burden. Starvation, suffocation, toxification. You're not going to hear that anywhere, folks. Only on this program we talk about that. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification of a cell leads to all diseases, including cancer. Cancer cell, what makes the, uh, cancer, what makes the disease called cancer unique among diseases is the fact that the genetics have been switched into a primitive way of operating, a primitive way of utilizing energy. Cancer is an adaptive mechanism. It's one of the ways a cell adapts to long-term long burden, long-term abuse, long-term stress, which comes from starvation, suffocation, and toxification. All of this leads to a, a, an adaptive change, a genetic switch that gets turned on that causes the cell to apparently seemingly grow in a chaotic fashion but it's not really a chaotic fashion it's more like a it's more like an independent fashion a cancer cell is growing in this independent way where it doesn't care about its neighbors it doesn't care about the environment it just cares about itself yesterday we finished up the program by talking about how uh, a, a cancer cell operates like a unicellular organism there's two ways cells can operate they can operate as team players which is what advanced cells do highly evolved cells like animal cells or plant cells our cells these operate as a team player they form structures they form organs and they form glands and they form uh, tissues a cancer cell is more like a bacterial cell that doesn't form organs that doesn't form macro structures that doesn't form organ organized uh, systems a bacterial cell just operates on its own it just divides and divides and divides. It's not a team player. It doesn't form teams. It doesn't form organized structures. And guess what? That's what a cancer cell is. A cancer cell is a cell that's operating like a bacteria. And that's all due to burden, starvation, suffocation, and toxification. And that's super important to recognize because that's where we have control. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. We're back on the Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. Thanks for joining us on the Bright Side. 
We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time. If you miss a program, they're all archived at brightsideben.com, benfuchsarchives.com, and, uh, well, that's it, benfuchsarchives.com and Brights, uh, uh, brightsideben.com. You can also, if you check out my Facebook page, my buddy Kevin, in uh, Russia, low cabin, if you're listening, he's been posting my uh, all the programs up with no commercials on my Facebook page, and there's also a YouTube channel that you can get to from uh, from the links on the Facebook page that have all the programs without commercials, which is kind of cool. Thank you, Kevin, for doing that. If you're interested in checking out our True Skin Health products, including Retinol 5% Gel made without preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, water, it'll last you six months, folks. If you use it as directed, some people use it more than as directed. It's going to last you three to six months any way you use it. Uh, it's made with more retinol than you're going to find in any other in other uh, skin health product. The most I've ever seen is 2%. This one is a 5% retinol, the real deal, not the fake stuff that you see sometimes on the Amazon for $10. If you're seeing a retinol product, by the way, for $10 or $15, it's a fraud. And I purchased them. I've actually spent the $10 or $15 or $20 to purchase them. They're frauds. And it's just mean-spirited. If you want real retinol, you've got to look for retinol in high enough concentrations, and you want to make sure that you're buying it from a reputable company. You're not going to find 5% retinol anywhere. Retinol is not just important for anti-aging, which it's probably the most significant, along with vitamin C, uh, which you'll also find in our retinol 5% gel. Those are the two most important anti-aging products. But retinol is also very effective for dealing with acne, for dealing with dark spots, for dealing with dry, uh, flaky type of skin, especially thick, flaky skin that's on the feet or on the heels. It's just a stupendously important important ingredient. In fact, I consider it to be the only important ingredient along with vitamin C for dealing with skin health issues. You can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truth treatment, truth treatments, plural, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we are talking cancer. I'm just going to say a few more things about it, and then we're going to finish up um, our discussion on the PPD hormones and the ketogenic diet. And by the way, both the PPD hormones, pregnenolone, progesterone and DHEA play a role in helping the body protect itself from cancer, as we'll talk about here in a minute. The ketogenic diet also is anti-cancer. Both of these strategies help strengthen a cell. They calm the body down. And this is really the problem when we have cancer. We got, uh, we're dealing with cells that are burdened and we're dealing with uh, a body in distress. Cells in distress and a body in distress. And, and the cellular distress involves, as we said before the break, starvation, suffocation, and toxification. This leads to inflammation. And make no mistake about it, behind all cancers, you will find inflammation. It's one of the hallmark signs of cancer. I'm talking micro, microscopic, teeny tiny cell inflammation, not a black eye. You don't see that infl this kind of inflammation. You s it, it's microscopic, and of course, it leads to, as we've said so many times, it leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification, which leads to more inflammation, which leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification. So what do you do? Well, you deal with the starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Now, if you're in the later stages of cancer, I want to reinforce this. If you're in the, the late, cancer severity is described in stages. You got stage, stage zero is the first stage actually, and that's when you've got some cancer cells going, but it hasn't really spread. Sometimes you'll hear the term in situ, I-N-S-I-T-U, cancer or carcinoma in situ. In situ uh, is, it's cancer technically, but Actually, it's not really even cancer. It's, it's a predisposition to cancer. It's abnormal cells that may become cancerous. That's stage zero. Stage one, two, and three, the next levels are when you got the cancer. And the higher your number, uh, the bigger your tumor, and the more it's spreading. So stage one, two, and three are the next stage. And if you're in stage three, or even later stage two, you might want to think about radiation, chemotherapy, or medical intervention, surgery, uh, for example. Stage four is when the cancer spread, and if it's spread, well, it's spread. You're not going to be able to address a spreaded cancer or spreading cancer with surgery, obviously, because the cancer spread. Or is chemotherapy is is intense at this level, and as is radiation. So you got to do what you got to do if you're in the later stages. If you're in the super late stages, there's not much you can do except for make the body stronger. Stage four cancer does not lend itself very well to medical intervention, but there are stage four cancers that remit, that go backwards. 
And this is where taking care of the body is so important. The medical model of killing cancer, chemo, radiation, surgery, sometimes necessary. I'm not saying that it's not absolutely not necessary. You gotta decide where you're at with your particular cancer. But the problem is these protocols don't address the cause. They don't address the fundamental problem. Thus, it should be as no surprise, as you will read on the American Society of Clinical Oncology's uh, website, cancer.net, cancer remits, it, or cancer comes back. It doesn't it remit, remits is something else. It comes back. Cancer returns, and it can be very distressing. Shock, disbelief, anxiety, anger, grief. Worst of all, a sense of just being out of control. When cancer comes back, it's worse than it when you get it in the first place. It's an, a, a terrible experience. This, by, by the way, doctors know that cancers come back, and that's why they use this thing called the five-year survival to to indicate whether they're successful or not. If you get your cancer back, if you get you, you can be completely cured of cancer according to the model, but you'll get your cancer back in six years because they measure their success by this thing called the five-year survival rate. And alternative practices of killing cancer are slightly better. They're not as toxic, maybe. But it still misses the point. Do you need Essiac or Hoxy or Hydrazine or cannabis or turmeric or, or, or whatever, genetically modified viruses? These are all strategies, alternative strategies for dealing with cancer. Maybe they're helpful sometimes. But I like to take a different approach. The spontaneous, this is a quote from the Journal of Natural Science, Biology, and Medicine, 2011. The spontaneous healing of cancer is a phenomenon that has been observed for hundreds and thousands of years, and after having been the subject of many controversies, is now accepted as an indisputable fact, unquote. Look it up, June 2011 edition, Journal of Natural Science, Biology, and Medicine. And what this means is you don't have to be condemned if you have cancer. If one human body is capable of remitting, we all are capable of remitting. And I know there's lots of people who talk about alternative therapies, and some of them are my friends, Ty Bollinger, my buddy, he's got a great book called Cancer Step Outside the Box. It has a whole bunch of non-medical ways of eliminating cancer. You might want to check it out if you you or a loved one is dealing with cancer. But I like to take a different approach. I like to take the approach that we want to change the environment that the cancer is appearing in. And this does a couple of things. For one thing, uh, it'll be a real cure. If you address the cause and you eliminate the cancer, that's a real cure. That's not a fake cure. That's a real cure. And, and even though doctors hate when you say that word, if you've uh, switched the environment of the body around so the cancer's gone, that's a real cure. And the fact that cancers remit mean that's, means that that is possible. But the number two point is just as important, I think, because what we're doing is we're making the body stronger. Whether or not we have the diagnosis, we're making the body stronger. Even if the cancer doesn't remit, we're making the body stronger. We will feel better. Our patient will feel better. Our mother or father or loved one will feel better. And that's the ultimate goal. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for being here. 844 236 6010 is our number. Got a few more things I want to say about cancer. Uh, and then uh, tomorrow we'll talk, uh, I'll talk about uh, if you're doing the longevity products, I'll get you some uh, good longevity stuff that you can use, not necessarily for curing your body of cancer, but for dealing with the disease, for helping your body feel stronger. I just did a call this morning for, uh, for Linda Tyler on cancer for longevity for longevity nation as it's been called and i will uh, go over some of the highlights tomorrow the, some of the products we talked about for helping the body deal with cancer and if you're selling longevity products or in the, you're part of the longevity family you're going to want to tune into that that'll be tomorrow and then we'll continue talking about the ketogenic diet and the steroid hormones have not forgotten those those are so important and they're important for helping the body with cancer too by the way the ppd hormones help the body or help cells process energy it's particularly they're particularly important for oxygenation respiration and oxygenation is a key component or a lack of oxygenation is a key element when it comes to why a cell turns cancerous in fact according to Dr. Otto, Walbert, Otto Warburg, who is one of the most famous biochemists, cellular chemists of all time, that's the reason why cells turn cancerous. It's called the Warburg effect, 
and it has to do with oxygenation of cells. I add in nutritional uh, issues, uh, starvation, lack of nutrients, which are linked to oxygenation, and toxicity, which is linked to lack of oxygen. So it's all kind of one big thing. Uh, that's why I call it the, uh, the th I, that's why I always mention these as the three points that a cell breaks down at. I always mention these things together, starvation, suffocation, and toxification. They all work together. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I had this really cool article here. Where is it? Here, here it is. This is, um, this is from the journal Nature Cell Biology. Breast cancer cells use newfound pathway to survive low oxygen levels in tumors. Apparently, they just found a way that breast cancer cells survive low oxygen levels. This is what I'm talking about here. Cancer cells are cells that have figured out how to live in a low oxygen environment. They've been suffocating for so long, they've now switched into an adaptive way, an alternative way of processing. According to this article, researchers have identified what they call a new signaling pathway. It's basically just chemistry. They've identified new chemistry not new chemistry, they've identified chemistry newly, they've recently identified chemistry, that helps cancer cells cope with a lack of oxygen found inside of tumors. This is why respiration is so important uh, to prevent cancer. I'm not going to say you're going to breathe your way out of cancer, but certainly can help. But you can also do things like hyperbaric oxygen chambers, where they drive oxygen, uh, drive oxygen into your body. These hyperbaric oxygen chambers are found in hospitals throughout the country, and if I had cancer, I certainly would be doing hyperbaric oxygen, in addition to all the other strategies uh, that we talk about all the time on the Bright Side, because dealing with cancer is like dealing with any chronic long-term degenerative disease. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go off to Allie in Utah. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up, Allie? Uh, hi, doctor. I just was asking about oxybody and it's a product from longevity and it yes. supposedly helps your oxygen levels lift well, and i wondered how you felt about that particular product uh Do you use ask me no questions you? i'll tell you no lies okay <laughs> you don't really breathe you don't you know, I love the longevity products, but I, you know, some of them I can't really say too much about because uh, you don't breathe through your mouth. It, it does contain, in fairness, it's an aloe vera base with, uh, with some hydrogen peroxide, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get oxygen. Uh -huh. You know, oxygen doesn't come in through your stomach. Oxygen comes in through your lungs, a little bit through your skin. So okay. I can't really talk about the oxybody. What I can talk, or I can't talk about the oxygen in the oxybody. However, what I can talk about is the aloe. And the aloe will make it easier for the bot for cells to breathe. Aloe is an incredibly helpful substance. It's got polysaccharides, which are important for the cell membrane. Uh, components in aloe vera can be used, broken down, and utilized to help make cells. Cells breathe at the membrane level. I'd be more impressed with the aloe uh, in the uh, in the oxy body than the hydrogen peroxide. So, uh, huh. I, ho I hope that helps. Did I, I, that was that was a very diplomatic answer. <laughs> and what about inflammation? I mean, I notice when I eat wrong, I have inflammation. Well, yeah. Did you just start listening to this program? That's yeah, a fun, no, yeah. Fun. Did you just start listening? Have you not listened before? No. Okay, I well, mean, we I talk about it every day. I've been talking about it for decades. Absolutely. Inflammation is the body's response to attack. It's a protective response. It's a beaver's dam. How does the body get attacked? Well, if you're an IV drug user, it gets attacked through the through the uh, through your the drugs you're injecting into your blood, I, most people aren't IV drug users. There's the whole vaccine thing, and that's that's a whole other story. But that's one of the problems with vaccines is they attack the body. Um, there's breathing. You can breathe things into the into the system. But the most important way why we get attacked and the, then the body subsequently inflames is food. Absolutely, Allie. Right on. You're correct. If you're dealing with arthritis, um, uh, an inflammatory health issue, uh, you'll notice multiple sclerosis, autoimmunity. You'll notice you feel worse after certain foods. You know, it's like the old joke. You go to the doctor. He says, Doc, it hurts when I do this. He says, so what does the doc say? Well, don't do that. You know, that's basically it. You know, yes, well, you're absolutely correct. Well, used to say take um, uh, ibuprofen. And so I, well, for a while yeah. there, I was for years, I was an ibuprofen person trying to get rid of that pain. 
But right. then when I started doing Dr. Wallach's diet, I noticed when I get off the diet, the inflammation comes. When I get back on the diet, the inflammation comes. You're your own doctor, Allie. Dr. Allie. And by the way, I'm Pharmacist Ben. I'm not Dr. Ben, but you are Dr. Allie. I now pronounce you, at least for yourself. All right, i got to motivate, Allie. Thanks for your call. Thanks Thank for you. listening. Hope you stay listening. All right, Robin in Oklahoma, welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. I, can I make a little caveat comment on cancer? Sure. Dr. Gonzalez, who is passed right. away, um, yes. he advocated starving. I mean, the starvation aspect of cancer. Caloric restriction. I don't know if he yes. said starving. He said, absolutely. The, yeah, absolutely. Caloric well, restriction starving, and fasting. Starving Very the important. Cancer. Star, not starving the body, but starving the cancer. Ah, so, uh, yes. I see what you're saying. You know what yeah. I'm saying. I'm not yes, caloric the restriction. Caloric restriction and fasting are two very, and the ketogenic diet are, are all very important strategies for dealing with cancer. And not only dealing with cancer, Robin, improving the effects of drugs or chemotherapy or alternative, uh, alternative things like turmeric and aloe that kill cancer. Fasting and caloric restriction and uh, the ketogenic diet, or as you say, starving the cancer, is a very important strategy. And I love Dr. Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez's yeah, work. We, and if we, you, will mi- we will miss him. We will miss him, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I What's, have all the series of uh, The Truth About cancer series and he was the most phenomenal loving of humanity and we he he we will miss him so badly Yeah, he has anyway. a website. There's a, he has yeah. a website with a bunch of his tapes, uh, yeah. uh, seminars that he's done, if, yeah, you're, if you're interested. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody. Yeah, I forgot should. the name of the website. You, do you know the name of the website? Mm, no, I do not. Okay, uh, yeah, just okay. Google. If anybody out there is interested, he has tapes and he has PDF uh, files that you can download. And the tapes are, are seminars he's done and workshops he's done. Uh, and you'll have to Google Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez and cancer, and I'll see if I can dig up the website. It's uh, He's got a lot of good information he, he, on it. He that. also, you know... You know, starving the the, the the starvation of the cancer has to do with the stem cells. You know, the st- you, they say, well, you're free of cancer. Well, no, you're not. You still have the stem cells. You still have the stem stem cells, and what yeah. comes out of stem cells, and that's life. So well, that's true. that's true. The cancer so stem I cells. Have, I do have. You know, you got to hang on. I'm sorry. I hate to do this to you, but we got to take a commercial. So uh, don't go away. All right. Uh, if you're on hold, we'll get to you as well. We'll try to get to you as well. So hang tight. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We've got more health information, good health information in your phone calls right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Got to motivate here and go fast. Robin, what's going on? How you doing? Let's, uh, uh, let's I, get your my question. My original question, my original call. Um, whey protein. I have been yeah. taking a. I don't. I don't want to name the brand, but it's. You can name very, the brand. Okay, it's One World Whey. Okay. I've been taking that whey protein for oh several years. Did you I, stop taking it when he changed the formula a little bit, or did you? Did yes, you take I did. It right when they changed it, but now they're back to a much. They're better. back. Yeah. But yeah. bottom line is, it's two hundred bucks for five pounds. That's a lot, isn't it? That's a lot. It's a darn good protein, though. But, yeah, that's a lot. That's what I wanted to know. Is it worth... Oh, it's a great protein. You know, you'll have to make that decision for yourself. All protein... Protein's the most expensive of all the nutrients. And it's the most valuable, in my opinion. They're all important, but it may be the most valuable, arguably. Uh, And it is expensive to get quality protein. That's just how it is. If you go with eggs, uh, that's great. And actually, eggs are reasonably priced. You know, eggs are a good source of protein. Organ meats and fish are reasonably priced. But if you're going to go with the whey protein, which is next to eggs the best protein, it's going to be pricey to do it right. I use uh, the natural factors way. Uh, sometimes I'll use the Keto FX way, although that's got other things in it. But if I want just straight way, I go with Natural Factors. It's organic, uh, and then I'll also do uh, the One World way. Uh, between those two, that's between those three. That's where I get most of my whey protein from. Um, well, I mean, uh, when it's your meal. You yeah, that's why, that, that is, that's why I mix it up. That's why I mix it up. The, I, 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 the, the natural it. factors is the best next to, you know, you can, some people like the one world way. Some people like the natural factors. Those are probably the two best ways that I've seen. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper, the natural factors that. than the one world way. Okay. Uh, and I, I know Stephen, who does one world way, is a great guy. And uh, so I, I try to support him wherever I can. And he does have a great product. And his heart's in the right place. He's really looking out for humanity. And that's always important when people are making medicine for us, yeah. i.e. Uh, nutritional supplementation. Well, synergistic nutrition is a good site to begin with, but they just went right. up, you know, on, on everything. And I'm, yeah. I, I was just trying to weigh my weigh, weigh my. Well, I know. It's hard, to go, <laughs> it's hard to talk without using that, that word. It but, really is. Uh, <laughs> but it, but, uh, it is the it, best I have ever tried. It's really good. It is, it is really good. It, it, Natural factors in one world way. Those are my two okay. favorites. All right, okay. Thanks. 
Thank you, Robin. Take care. <laughs> okay, let's go to Benny in Austin. Welcome to the Bright Side. How you doing, Benny. sir? I, I was uh, listening to the program about cancer, and I think you answered some of my questions, but uh, I want to be clear on the fact on the on if if you have cancer, if I have a, a relative, I think they're probably stage three, and they're using Essiac and and aloe yeah. vera and uh, you know a few other uh, 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 hemp oil. But I was just wondering, do you think? Cannabis oil would be good. I heard you. Yeah, mention it. they're all good in the sense that they'll help, they'll help kill the cancer. But like I was saying earlier, killing the cancer may be necessary. But if you're doing killing the cancer strategies, that doesn't mean that you want to marginalize or dismiss making the body stronger strategies. Does that make sense? Killing yes, the cancer yes. may be necessary at, at stage three levels. I'm not saying it's not. But do not underestimate the power and importance of supplementation, of relaxation, of visualization, of uh, a caloric restriction in the ketogenic diet. These generalized strategies that make the body stronger. Does that make sense? Do you, do you understand how I said that? Yes, I think I do. Um, so, so uh, other supplements, are you saying that I should use other supplements? Yes, like, uh, absolutely. Like, well, let me, like, let me give uh, you just a few. Let me give you a few, all right? And tomorrow we'll talk about some longevity ones. Well, let me give you a few. One of the most, first of all, the most important is to make sure you get the basics, which is if you're using longevity, the healthy start pack, the mighty 90 essential nutrients. That's the basics. The second thing, vitamin C is not even remotely optional if you're dealing with cancer. Obviously, it's not optional if you're just being alive, but it's so important for dealing with cancer. The literature on vitamin C is so compelling for help. Intravenous vitamin C, oral vitamin C, you know, both ways. I'd be doing IV vitamin C if it was me. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. How do you get that? From a how, you can naturopath can do it. You're in Austin, right? I'm sure there's places yeah. where you can just look up naturopaths and IV nutrition. In fact, I would be doing IV nutrition, uh, not just vitamin C, but also magnesium, also selenium, also something called glutathione, which you may have heard of. G L U T A T H I O N E, glutathione, chelation therapy, where they stick a magnet in your blood, essentially a chemical magnet that attracts toxins out out of the blood. Uh, anything you could do to drive up nutrition, essential fatty acids, the ultimate EFAs, zinc, 50 milligrams a day, vitamin E, particularly the tocotrienol form of vitamin E, and that's T-O-C-O-T-R-I-E-N-O-L-S. Don't forget the oxygen, and then don't forget the detoxification, and that includes sugar. Staying away from processed foods, staying away from sugar. The problem with the cannabis and the hoxy and the hydrazine and the, and the Essiac formula, the problem with those is we think we can go about our lives living our lives the same way we did that caused the cancer in the first place, but we'll just take the Essiac. You follow me, Benny? Yeah, so, so we don't address these other factors because we think the ESIAC will take care of it. It's just like chemotherapy, except it's not as toxic. It's alternative chemotherapy. You know, it's like, I'll just no. do the ESIAC. But if you got the, you know, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and diff no, expecting no, different no, results, no. right? So if you do the same thing over and over again in your life and you just take the ESIAC, that's, that's, why, that's why these things get a bad reputation. Oh, I took the ESIAC. I still died. You know, whatever. I, I took the ESIAC. Yeah. Didn't make my cancer go away. You know what I'm saying? Total diet change. I got you. Everything. Don't forget prayer, visualization, mental strategies, emotional strategies, all that stuff. Okay? okay now one, one more thing. Now, now myself, um, I went to the doctor, and he, he was, I'm diabetic. And they're telling me that uh, my uh, uh, kidney function is at, uh, like, it, from, it went from, like, 1 to... 2.3. So he's basically so he, he calculated that to How? the kidney is in like a 40 percent uh, percentage rate. All right. Like All right. Well, you can still function. You're not in. You know, you got to work. Start working. But it's not like you're in dialysis range yet. How old are you, Benny? Uh, 58. Okay. What do the kidneys do? Do you know? Their main uh, I'm job. I'm not having any problems. I'm not having any problems. It's just you know what. Well, they we want to. You don't want to get to the point where you have problems, Benny. Your kidneys are yeah. arguably, well, they're one of the most important organs in the body. And it's, it's a nightmare can if you have kidney. Reversed? What's that? Can that be reversed? That yes, be absolutely. So I'm telling you, the kidneys filter the blood. The kidneys filter the blood. They're, they're spaghetti strainers for your blood. The way you keep your kidneys healthy is by cleaning the blood. You clean the blood through food and reducing your intake of sugar. The two major ways the blood gets dirty, or three major ways really, are, dirty, are, are food problems, leaky gut, 
for particularly food intolerances, sugar, and a lack of oxygen. Those are the three reasons why, and, and you may have heard that before, starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Yeah. Toxic, right? It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. So what you got to do is you got to change your diet around, caloric restriction, that is restricting your calories, go into fasting, eat as little food as you need, but stay, and especially stay away from processed food, stay away from sugar, uh, avoid anything that messes up your gut, digestive health, pro help your body process sugar, practice deep breathing, relaxation. I mean, it's the same stuff, really. It's everything is dirty blood, and if you have kidney disease, you have the same thing that people have when they have anything else, autoimmunity, cancer, anything else. So it's the same strategy. All right? Okay, and, and this is the last thing. Okay, yes, I understand. And uh, this is the last thing I want to say, that the, the doctor was suggesting that I take Levomar, Levomar uh, insulin. Well, you're on your own on that. But when you take insulin from the outside, your body, I don't recommend it personally, but, but you have to make your own decisions. Per, if you're going to do the Levomir or, or an insulin or injectable insulin or any other drug for that matter, do it as little for as short a period as possible. There are no good drugs, period. And I'm a pharmacist, and I've studied this for 32 years. There are none. If you need them, your object is to need them for as little as possible, as short a period as possible, while you wean yourself off of them. So if you do the drugs, the insulin, okay, strengthen your, strengthen your blood sugar system. i got to motivate Benny. Have a beautiful day, man. Hope Thank we helped you out. Thank you so much. Okay, God take bless. care, my man. All right. Let's go to Joe in Tennessee. What's going on, Joe? Got about a minute here, my friend. Uh, pharmacist man, love you, brother. Love what you do. Thank uh, you. The back of my neck is breaking out. Uh, it's inflamed. Okay. Uh, about did you do years something? Ago. What's that? Did you like fall or get traumatized somehow? Or mechanical no, issue? No, no, it's like it's like pimples. Um, oh, it's the skin. I noticed about yes three years ago. Um, I started having type two diabetes okay. uh, symptoms. And uh, my sugar, when I went to the doctor, it was like in the 500s. Um, oh, you got to take care of that, buddy. What are you yeah, doing for he that? He prescribed me uh, metformin, but I, I came home and started researching on the Internet. I didn't want to take it. I found Dr. Wallet, started taking uh, Tangy Tangerine, Sweeties, uh, started cardioing uh, three or four times a week. Um, I've lost about 40 pounds. My sugar. Joe, good job, my man. Sugar's, my sugar's back down to where it ought to be. Got about, only got about 20 seconds, Joe. What's going? Is it you got a skin issue on the? Like only got yeah, 30 seconds here. That's why my neck started breaking out. Okay. Okay. Get yourself on some niacin right away. Ultimate niacin. Get yourself on 30 milligrams a day of zinc, 20,000 IU of vitamin A. Make sure you're checking for food intolerances. I wish I had more time, brother, but we're just out of it. Thanks for your call, Joe. Thanks for listening, friends. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.